Hello, I'm Dr. Francisco Esteva, a medical oncologist specializing in breast cancer. Today we're exploring a groundbreaking development in cancer treatment, the use of immunotherapy in early stage breast cancer. Welcome to Cancer Treatment Updates, where treatment options for cancer are discussed openly and demystified. Imagine if your own immune system could be harnessed to fight cancer. This is the promise of immunotherapy. When a patient is diagnosed with invasive breast cancer, the tumor is always tested for several biomarkers. These include the estrogen receptor, the progesterone receptor, and HER2. If all three markers are absent, it is classified as triple negative breast cancer, or TNBC. The treatment of patients with early stage TNBC involves surgery, sometimes radiation, and chemotherapy if a tumor is less than two centimeters and there is no involvement of the axillary lymph nodes under the armpit, most of these patients are referred to surgery first and then they would receive chemotherapy after surgery. However, if the tumor is more than two centimeters in size or there is involvement of the axillary lymph nodes, those patients most of the time get treated with chemotherapy before surgery, then they would undergo lumpectomy or mastectomy and possibly radiation therapy. Systemic therapy may also be given after surgery depending on the response to the preoperative therapy. One of the chemotherapy regimens that is most commonly used in patients with early stage TNBC includes taxorubicin and cyclophosphamide, also known as AC, followed by ataxane, paclitaxel or docetaxel, and carboplatin. This combination is typically administered over several months in what we call cycles. The AC chemotherapy targets highly dividing cells, followed by taxane and carboplatin, which enhance treatment effectiveness through different mechanisms of action. These treatments can also be reversed. The taxane and carboplatin can be given before the um, AC. In these patients, uh, the Keynote 522 trial compared conventional chemotherapy to chemotherapy combined with pembrolizumab or k -truda. Pembrolizumab is a type of immunotherapy known as a checkpoint inhibitor. It blocks the PD-1 receptor on immune cells, preventing cancer cells from using this pathway to evade the immune system. By inhibiting this checkpoint, pembrolizumab enhances the body's immune response against cancer cells, promoting their destruction. The Keynote 522 study showed that patients receiving both chemotherapy and pembrolizumab had a higher pathological complete response and longer disease-free survival compared to those patients receiving chemotherapy alone. Consequently, this combination has become the standard of care for newly diagnosed patients with early stage TNBC where the tumor is large, larger than two centimeters or there is involvement of the axillary lymph nodes. So what about immunotherapy for patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative breast cancer? The role of immunotherapy in patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative early stage breast cancer remains uncertain. Recent clinical trials, such as the Keynote 756 and another study called Checkmate, have investigated this approach and published in 2023 in several large meetings, such as the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium in December of 2023. These studies targeted patients at high risk of recurrence based on tumor grade or estrogen receptor positivity. They compared outcomes between chemotherapy alone and chemotherapy combined with immunotherapy. The combination therapy group showed a modest improvement in achieving a pathological complete response, but data on event-free survival are still pending. A key question is whether there are better biomarkers than tumor grade or estrogen receptor positivity. The iSPY2 clinical trial, which included multiple arms administering immunotherapy, utilized the MAMA print test for gene expression profiling to segregate patients. It found that patients with ultra high MAMA print scores, with MAMA print high 2, the highest, benefited significantly from adding immunotherapy to their neoadjuvant chemotherapy. For example, in the iSPY2 
two trial arm with pembrolizumab, the pathological complete response rate improved from 21% with chemotherapy to over 60% with the addition of immunotherapy. This suggests that MAMA print high 2, the ultra highest status, may be a more precise biomarker for selecting patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative patients who could benefit from immunotherapy. We are currently investigating this in the SWAG S2206 study, enrolling only patients with MAMA print high 2 or ultra high. These patients are randomized to receive either chemotherapy alone or chemotherapy plus immunotherapy. This study aims to validate if this biomarker is superior in identifying patients who will benefit the most from immunotherapy. In my current practice, I have not yet adopted immunotherapy for patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative early stage breast cancer outside of clinical trials. However, I discussed the potential and the ongoing SWAG S2206 study with eligible patients, offering them the opportunity to participate in research that may shape future treatment standards. The SWAG S2206 study is available nationwide through the National Comprehensive Cancer Network Trials Network, or NCTN. The uh, MAMA print test could be covered by the study if not done as part of a standard of care. If the MAMA print shows an ultra high uh, risk, so called MAMA print high 2 score, then the patients would be eligible for the um, SWOG S2206 trial. So, what about patients with small tumors less than 2 centimeters with no involvement of the axillary lymph nodes? In that situation, most of the times, I refer patients to a surgeon and after surgery, when we know for sure what's the actual size of the tumor, then we can decide um, what chemotherapy is more appropriate. The treatment options uh, for patients with stage 1 breast cancer include a standard uh, AC followed by taxane and carboplatin therapy, but also we can consider less toxic regimens such as CMF, which is one of the oldest chemotherapy regimens, which includes cyclophosphamide, methotrexate, and fluorouracil, or a different regimen that includes docetaxel and cyclophosphamide. But in that particular setting, at the moment, we are not using pembrolizumab or immunotherapy in 2024. Another question that comes up is what to do in terms of monitoring of these patients after curative treatment with chemotherapy, surgery, radiation therapy. For patients with early stage breast cancer with an excellent prognosis, I personally do not currently recommend molecular testing like circular tumor DNA monitoring, as these tests are not yet linked to therapeutic interventions. Positive results may indicate a higher risk of recurrence, but without actionable treatments, they do not alter my patient care strategy. Rolling these patients in clinical trials is very important to understand the role of CT DNA and serial uh, testing in patients with early stage breast cancer who completed their treatment and now most of them will be cured but we want to identify the ones who are going to have a recurrence so we can intervene earlier. In contrast, for metastatic breast cancer, particularly triple negative and hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative or HER2 low uh, diseases, molecular testing is crucial. Serial testing helps identify mutations like the estrogen receptor mutation or PA3 kinase mutation that emerge after treatment with aromatase inhibitors, guiding subsequent therapy decisions. This approach ensures that treatment, uh, uh, targeted treatments are applied effectively as the disease progresses over time. The timing and importance of serial molecular testing will likely grow as more targeted therapies become available, continuing to refine and improve treatment strategies for metastatic breast cancer. In closing, immunotherapy is paving the way for new treatment paradigms in breast cancer. While it's already making significant strides in triple negative breast cancer, ongoing research and trials are essential for extending its benefits to other breast cancer subtypes. Stay tuned as we continue to explore these promising advances in cancer care. Thank you for watching.